I'm crossing the River Teviot at the moment. It's something that the invaders of Roxburgh Castle would find quite difficult. But it's easy enough for me. Over there, in those fields, you'd have the old village of Roxburgh, um, which is just near Council. You can just about see Council Abbey over there, sticking up. And Roxburgh Castle is over there. This is one of my favourite wee parts of the walk from uh, from Kelso to Roxburgh. This little, uh, it's kind of a stone stile here. So instead of going over the gate or through the gate, I like to uh, use a little step here. You can see how worn it is through, well, I don't know, 800 years worth of steps, perhaps. Definitely the way to go. And yeah, this is the the panel here about Roxburgh Village, which was in those fields. So I'm walking on this beautiful path um, beside the River Teviot from Kelso to, uh, to Roxburgh Castle, which you can almost see. And it's a little bit muddy today, but we see, a little bit muddy. Um, but it's a beautiful path and you can sometimes see wildlife, there's herons here, you might see some deer, roe deer. Um, you get swans and ducks on the river as well. So it's Good idea to come here, not just for the, uh, not just for the history, but for the nature as well. Now this is the first hint of the the castle that you can see, just nestling in the trees up there. You can see the beginnings of the castle as we're approaching, and we'll start to see a wee bit more as we get closer. If you were trying to besiege Roxburgh Castle, if you were trying to storm it, what would your tactics be to try to get up this hill? How would you approach the castle when uh, the defenders were shooting arrows at you? Or even muskets and uh, maybe small artillery pieces? What would you do? How would you get up there? Would you just wait? Would you perhaps wait for them to to uh, surrender? Very difficult. In fact, it's still not easy to approach the castle from here. We've got to go up this kind of little path and over the fence and yeah, be prepared to slip. trees. Look at all these chestnuts on the ground under obviously the chestnut tree. It's quite beautiful. You can see the chestnut tree leaves to prove that it is. Now, have a look at this. Um, here you can see the shape of the, uh, the landscape that we're on. You can see the, the kind of the path leading up there. And the, the ditch surrounding the mound, the promontory, that the castle was built on. It's really overgrown. So you've got to uh, take it a wee bit easy up here. 
that's Fleur's Castle over the other side of the River Tweed to the north of Roxburgh. Uh, it's the home of the Duke of Buccleuch and it's magnificent. I believe it's the biggest inhabited house in Scotland, or continually inhabited. It's certainly impressive. You've really got to try to pick your way through the nettles up here. It's pretty overgrown. Um, I'm looking for some sort of rudimentary path, but it's not easy. It's not easy when you've got these nettles uh, waiting to attack you. Can we get up that way? Maybe. Not really. Ooh, careful. Oh boy. Come on. Out of the way, out of the way in that one. And really there's all sorts of lumps and bumps in the ground. So you're not really sure when you put your foot down if it's going to uh, stay there. I'm trying to fight my way through the uh, through the nettles and all the tall plants here and stuff, and I'm trying to find a way. Let's see, can I figure out a way under this branch? It's not easy when you've got all this in your way. Let's lift that up. Duck down and there. Phew. And this must be kind of a tower, I guess. down some of these nettles so I can make a little bit of progress possibly out of the way that's it um I think that way I'm looking for any sign of a path. <laughs> there isn't one. Okay, there's a kind of a path up this way. You can just about see it, almost. Getting up there, so we'll try it. We'll try going this way. It's still really steep though. And it's still full of nettles. But somebody's been up or down this way. Well, I know I have, but uh, not for a long time. But somebody's been up or down here, kind of recently. Let's try and get a footing. Uh, 
that's slippy, that's very slippy. That's not. Good view. Gotta like the view though. Almost there. Now I'll be getting the, uh, the boiling oil poured on me. Ah, can I make it through those nettles? Possibly not. Can I go that way? Yeah. Look at that arch. That stood there for maybe 900 years. That sounded like a buzzard. Did you hear it? Tramping down the nettles. I'm going to get up there. I think so. Did you hear it? I might be able to see it. It sounded a little bit too far for us to see at the moment. Still got to be careful through the walls. We are definitely now in the castle, inside Roxburgh Castle. Looking south towards England. Look at this archway. Isn't that amazing that it's still standing? Ow, that was a nettle. Sorry. <laughs> it's amazing though, isn't it? Look, it's so thin. But the walls are so thick. Yeah, there's definitely a buzzard around somewhere. So the castle was built around 1125 by King David I, who was a, a great Scottish king, um, a very progressive, modern, intellectual, um, international kind of king. He, um, this was his uh, southern palace, or his uh, southern stronghold here and almost on the border of England. So it was the, the primary defense against uh, land invasions uh, coming up from England. And consequently, because it was so important, it changed hands between Scotland and England um, loads of times while it was still uh, in effect, in operation. Um, for example, there's a siege here in uh, 14, 1460 ish, I'll have to check that, about 1460, when um, um, the Scottish King, James II, was attempting to take back the castle. And he was a great fan of artillery pieces. He, he, uh, he, he was besieging the castle with his artillery and he loved them. Um, but one of his great bombards exploded and killed him. Um, sadly, but the Scots managed to capture the castle anyway. Um, and his, uh, his wife, uh, Mary of Gilders, um, when she took over as, uh, as regent, she, um, she decided that the castle should be, uh, should be brought down, should be slighted, as they, they say, it should be destroyed. Um, in order that the, the English couldn't capture it again and couldn't uh, can control the, the south of Scotland with the castle and possibly as a, a kind of an act of grief as well because her husband had been killed here she, she decided to tear it down. Um, I'm not sure which reason was more important to her.
this is the great courtyard of the castle, which is a large central area, which certainly had all the, the towers and the wood carved walls and so on around it. But this is where you would get the, the king's apartments, you would get the, uh, the treasury and the, um, you know, all the, the important buildings, the, the keep, uh, the kitchens and the hall and bedrooms and so on, that would be in here in the, you know, around the, the courtyard. So this is perhaps the, the most important part of the palace, uh, uh, the castle I should say, um, right in the middle. And it's actually now, um, that when I've been here in the past, you sometimes see deer um, having a little sleep or just wandering around in here, protected, um, protected from it everywhere else in the world. So it still kind of performs the function it was originally intended to do. of um, interesting stories about the castle here. In the 1300s uh, the castle was held by the English for a while and uh, the Black Douglas, um, a local local hero, local legend, um, he decided to storm the castle um, but he was a sneaky man was old, uh, old James Douglas and uh, well he's called the Black Douglas um, mostly, um, but he's also known as Good Sir James in Scotland um, because of his actions for, uh, from the two different perspectives of the countries. So Good Sir James, he, uh, he wanted to take the, the castle back from the English, um, but he knew it was going to be very, very difficult for him to do that um, with an army or whatever he had, so he decided that he would storm the castle by uh, disguising his men as cows, believe it or not, and they would approach the castle disguised as cows, only 60 of them, and the English, um, when they were drunk one night, when they were having a feast, they, they, they didn't pay any attention to these cows approaching the castle. Um, mooing, perhaps, <laughs> and, uh, and he successfully took the castle with just 60 men pretending to be cows. And a somewhat more grisly story, um, Mary Bruce, the wife of Robert the Bruce, was captured by Edward, uh, King Edward of England, and she was imprisoned here on these walls. She was kept in a cage, hang, or hung, no hang in this case, hang outside the walls in a cage for four years. Um, as punishment and to taunt uh, Robert the Bruce. He's kept there in a cage, dangling from the walls. Um, amazing, amazing, what incredible, terrible things, brutal things went on at the time. On both sides, of course, you know, both sides did terrible things. But yeah, imagine keeping a woman, the wife of the king of your enemy, in a, in a dangling cage um, outside his own castle. The castle is only completely destroyed um, when the, uh, the English king, Henry VIII, when he um, effectively lost the, what was called the, the rough wooing, when um, he tried to get uh, his, well, he tried to get his son, Edward, married to uh, uh, Mary Queen of Scots. And he persuaded, or tried to persuade the the Scottish lords, uh, let's try going this way, the Scottish lords and, you know, the, the noblemen of Scotland tried to persuade them by destroying all their lands, burning their crops and uh, besieging their castles and, and desecrating their graves and all that kind of thing. Um, didn't succeed, fortunately. Um, and he, well, because he was also um, at war with France, so it, uh, there was what was called the Old Alliance, Scotland and France were acting together against England. Um, so Henry um, lost the rough wooing, but at the end of the uh, end of that war, civil war or whatever you might call it, um, there was the, the Treaty of Boulogne between um, France and England, and one of the stipulations was that Rock Roxburgh Castle had to be flattened, it had to be destroyed, so that uh, neither side, neither Scotland or England, could control 
um, Roxburgh and the, the surrounding area, um, uh, Jedburgh and Kelso and so on. Um, so yes, that was why in 1460, I think, um, Roxburgh Castle was destroyed and it's been almost uh, ever since, it's been as it is, all the walls taken down, all the buildings and it's now just, yeah, it's just as it is. The, 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 um, the physical geography is still here, you can still very much see wh why the castle was put here and you can see some remnants of walls around. Um, you would probably notice it as you're driving past if you didn't know it was here. But yeah, it's, it's a shame that there is effectively no more Roxburgh Castle here. Thanks for watching my videos. My name's Andrew and I love showing you the beautiful Scottish borders, especially the nature and history. You can subscribe to my channel by tapping onto my face in the corner and then you can tap onto the bell to make sure you're always notified whenever I post a new video. It'd also be great if you could follow me on Twitter and Periscope where you can join the thousands of people who regularly watch my live streams. You can find me at A9630. Thanks for watching.